ओम शांति बोलो ओम शांति और जोर से बोलो लिटिल बिट लाउडर गुड आज का जो टॉपिक है वो बहुत दिल को आराम देने वाली है today's topic is such which is going to comfort our hearts to aap sab jo bhi aaye hai and i think those of you who have all come here already have experienced that comfort in your hearts if yes please nod your heads yes aha uh-huh. ha if you wave your hands good Mm-hmm. Wow. It's wow, wonderful. So, abhi to ab, jab aapke dil mein aaram aa gaya hai. And so, when your hearts have received the comforts, what will you do further? Jahan bhi jayenge. Where will, wherever you will go. Jo bechain dil wali hai. you will give comfort to the souls who are distressed who are disheartened who are worried who are devoid of peace love and joy you will give them comfort yes you will give them the experience of peace and happiness this is why shiv baba that is god the supreme father and brahma baba they have given us children one title what is that title he has given us you are the children the children of the comforter of hearts you are also the ones who are comforters of hearts when your heart is in comfort when your heart is peaceful then you are able to share it with others definitely when you receive when you get this experience of comfort where there is contentment where there is happiness there is comfort in the heart sukh bhi hota hai then there is joy then there is peace there is bliss aur sachcha dil ka pyar bhi hota hai and at the same time there is true love of the heart to duniya mein aajkal bhi hai even now it is there is love in the world but sachcha dil ka pyar the true love of the the sign of the true love of the heart is it, it will not give you sorrow it will not be deceptive it will not be selfish it would be true love the, the true love of the heart is such that whenever you see your beloved your heart comes in comfort when for example people go to a church or any holy place or any place where there is the peace you definitely also feel love for god so today there is lacking of 
that peace and happiness which gives the comfort to the heart there is unattainment this is why there is discontentment even if somebody is a millionaire or a billionaire but there is not the comfort of the heart there is not that contentment there are beggars who do not have anything they also of course are discontented they are in discomfort they are in sorrow they are in peacelessness because the main reason is that there is absence of true love there is selfishness and instead of the experience of bliss there are negative thoughts negative vision negative attitude so the basis of giving comfort to the heart or joy is contentment but this contentment comes from god the supreme father who is almighty and who is the bestower of everything which the soul requires he is the bestower of love peace joy and bliss for example you have many material things for happiness but you don't have peace or if you do if you have experience of peace or the material things for happiness but there is you are lacking in love you are not having that love the true love or you do not have the experience of bliss if you are not having uh, even if one of these four that is happiness peace love and bliss then you can net be contented sometimes you will be contented and sometimes you will not be contented what we need is we need the constant comfort of the heart that means ye kyu bolna chahiye karam karte action conscious ho jate hai na the thing is we become action conscious hone ke karan and because of it we do not become soul conscious and when there is not soul consciousness there is not the consciousness of the supreme soul either kai bhai behan aise kehte bhi hai abhyas abhi kar rahe hai na to abhyas karne mein kai var aisa hota hai now jo hum samajhte hai baithe hai jo योग करने के लिए मेडिटेशन करने के लिए बैठी है लेकिन कभी तो मन लग जाता है सम ऑफ द सम ऑफ द ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स से दैट व्हेन वी सिट स्पेशली फॉर द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ मेडिटेशन वी आर थिंकिंग वी आर वांटिंग टू डू दैट दैट आई वांट टू मेडिटेट अभी मैं बैठी इसी काम आई हैव आई हैव स्पेशली सिट फॉर दिस प्रैक्टिस but sometimes my mind concentrates in meditation stabilizes and sometimes not but it is why it is so that it does not get stabilized the reason for this is that though i have specially found time to sit in this stage but i do not come in soul conscious stage i forget that i am a soul because i forget that i am a soul because i am not stabilized in this stage i am not able to connect or concentrate my mind to the father because god is the father of the soul if for example there is a man who is not my father and i all the time say him father 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 papa papa listen to me listen to me but he is not my father he will not listen to me so in the same way i address to god 
but i forget that god is not the father of the body god is the father of the soul so first of all i have to consider myself a soul then i address to my father i remember the father because he is the father of the soul he is not the father of the body the father of the bodies are different for everyone to ganti ye hoti hai ki soul consciousness hongi to supreme soul consciousness so the the main thing is when you are soul conscious then you will be conscious of the trace of body consciousness you will not be able to detach from the body you will think i am a soul then again you come in the body you will again think i am a soul you will again come in the body so there is soul consciousness body consciousness soul consciousness body consciousness soul consciousness body consciousness and this is why this connection with the supreme soul is not there and so you can't experience the meeting with the father and you can't experience attaining powers peace and joy and happiness from the father so you won't experience that mm-hmm. you will sit for half an hour but you were soul conscious for just a few minutes then body conscious and then few minutes soul conscious then again body conscious so if you would have been in soul conscious for complete half an hour then you would have attained much much more from the supreme father for example this connection of the wire is cut again and again it is disconnected so you won't be able to listen to the voice then you would be disturbed so in the same way my connection and my relation of the mind with god should be constant if it is not constant if it is breaking again and again then you won't experience the bliss hmm. then it would be said you are trying you are trying yes by trying uh, you will definitely attain that stage but you will not attain at the time when you are in this process of trying because it was connection connection disconnection connection and disconnection and so you will say definitely that do i sat for half an hour but there was not that experience it is clear because there was not the constant connection now look the light is constantly on if it it flickers i know it on off on off on off it flickers you would say rather put it off because it disturbs a lot so in the same way if i am connected to god and then disconnected and connected and then disconnected constantly then you won't experience that joy god is called the comforter of hearts it is god who gives the comfort to our hearts you saw the temple of dilwala dilwala temple means the one who conquers your heart who wins your heart and who gives comfort to your hearts so if we want the constant comfort of the heart we to have we have to have a constant connection so for example you sit in meditation for half an hour and totally for an hour completely connected you will experience that comfort that joy but for 23 and a half hours you were disconnected with the father so what will happen then you will not have that constant experience of the comfort like if the director has to work on the stage for 4 hours but he remembers it just for 15 minutes and rest of the time he forgets about it 
then what will happen to his job? Uh, what will the workers do? His cooperative people will do? That the, everything will spoil. In the same way, we also want constant joy, peace and happiness. So we have to have constant connection. So I asked two little children, I asked two little children uh, that you want peace and happiness. Is it possible that one of you get for four hours peace and happiness, another of you gets four hours peace and happiness? Then they said, no, 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 we want peace for all the time. It is not that we want peace for just four hours. We want peace forever. So all want forever, for constant. Nobody wants like this, that now this moment happiness, then I want sorrow, then I again want joy, then I again want some suffering. No. So we also want the comfort of the hearts for ever. Or you think that it is enough, even if you have comfort of the heart for one hour. If you want forever, raise your hand. So what you have to do for that? And what you have to do for that? And the one who is the giver of the comfort of the heart, you have to develop connection with Supreme Father and you have to develop relationships with Him and you have to live those relationships. And it can remain a uh, constant relationship when you consider yourself to be a soul constantly. You will say that it needs a lot of practice. Yes, true, it is, it is like that. You have to check yourself again and again. You should make your program yourself, depending upon your job, your duty, your responsibilities. According to that, make a program for yourself. Like after every one or two hours, stop and check yourself. For example, after two hours, you feel thirsty. You stop your work for a minute, get up, take a glass of water and drink it, isn't it? Or if there is some urgent call, you do attend that call during your work. So in the same way, during job, you must find time after every one, two hours to check yourself. It should not be that you do it only in the morning and during the day you forget completely. So after every two hours, check for even one second. In what consciousness I am? Soul consciousness and body consciousness. It does not take much time to check. Even it takes time to speak, but it takes very little time to check. You should make a habit. Uh, some people say, should we have a special clock for that? Why, it is not at all a difficult thing. For example, when you are sick and the doctor says, doctor says after every hour, take medicine, for example. Homeopathy doctors say like that. So we don't, uh, you know, have a clock for that, that after, automatically, you know, it comes that after every hour I have to take this medicine. So this is a medicine for the mind. That was the medicine for the body. This is the medicine for the mind. 
<laughs> if you use this medicine of the mind, you will not fall sick for 21 births. You will not have to check yourself for 21 births. After that medicine, you may be cured of one sickness, you may get another sickness. But if you check now uh, and come in soul consciousness for this in this birth, then for 21 births you will not have to do this effort, it is guaranteed, God guarantees this. God is truth, it is said. So whatever he speaks is also truth. They can't change, they are unchangeable. Therefore, make your timetable. You make your timetable for your physical activities, isn't it? I have to do it for two hours this, half an hour this, four hours this, and so on and so on. In the same way, make a timetable for your mind and check yourself. Just for a minute. For example, you go from my this seat, your seat to the door. During this time, you can check yourself. I think you will definitely get time for this. Uh, so I think, I don't think that nobody can get this much time. Even an accountant or a great thinker probably are very busy, but even they will feel thirsty. They will find time to drink water or to do something else. So if in the same way you will make a timetable for your mind, like you make a timetable for your physical activities, it will be very, very helpful. Whether I was soul conscious or not, check this. There are two things which disturb, two things which disturb a lot and they do not allow one to bring into, come into soul consciousness. They bring you into body consciousness. One of them is wasteful thinking. Wasteful thinking about others. And second is worry. Negative thinking and wasteful thinking about others. And second, worry. Whether it is a worry for the body or worry of the relationships or worry regarding wealth. For example, you have some wasteful and negative thoughts. How to understand that they are wasteful thoughts and negative thoughts? The speed of wasteful thoughts is very fast and the speed of good thoughts, pure thoughts is slow. And negative ones have a very fast speed. Check your check it. You will see. And because they are very fast, then a lot of energy is wasted. And second is worry. Worry brings a lot of sorrow and peacelessness. So we have to check that I should not have any worry about anything and anyone. In India, worry is considered like a pyre. So like you, uh, when a person dies, you know, he's put on a pyre, his body is uh, buried, you know, cremated and burnt on the fire. So it is said in India that worry is like a pyre. And so neither have wasteful thinking and nor worry. Adat padi hui hai na, te sat janam ki, to aayenge zaroo. 
because we have the habit of thinking wastefully since birth after birth. So the wasteful thoughts will come definitely. It is not that within a moment they will leave you. They will come to you again and again. So what is the method of getting rid of these wasteful thoughts? So the method is to change them. So to change, to change wasteful and negative thoughts, you need powerful and positive thoughts. Thoughts can change the thoughts. And it is for that you listen to the lessons every day. We get teachings from the Supreme Father every day. These teachings are the source of the positive thoughts. All these lessons which were given to you, they are the source of the positive thoughts. You got good thoughts, isn't it? So whenever any negative thought or the wasteful thought enters your mind, you immediately begin to think of some positive thoughts. So after you, you are now doing the basic lessons here, courses, and then you will later on, if you will continue, you will listen further the depth of the knowledge. And so if there is something wasteful, then uh, remember any of these positive thoughts points of knowledge and so if you will purposely create or recall these thoughts of knowledge then wasteful thoughts will leave you negative thoughts will leave you definitely adopt this method it is very clear that one has to do some effort to attain something. And moreover, here we are getting attainments for all time. So we definitely need to pay some attention at least. For example, you are not able to attend the classes every day. Nowadays, it is the mobile telephones and mobile. <laughs> Nowadays, there is mobile telephone and so easy you are carrying with you. In every pocket, there is a mobile telephone. And so, if, even if you are not able to go to the classes, you can, uh, you can call, make a call and ask, what was the good point today? But it should be definitely a genuine reason. It should not be carelessness or it should not be just an excuse. So even just, a, just make a call and listen what was the good point for today. Even if you don't listen four, four points, four, less, four sentences, at least you can listen one point, one point of one sentence. Listen to that. You will definitely find time for that, listening to one sentence, or you don't have time even for that. I went to Canada. There was a chief of the military. He was very much interested in meditation, but he didn't have time to come to the center. He called me in his office. He said to me, um, Sister, please see my office. I am so busy. 
I have so many calls. I have so many things to do. I can't find time to come in the class. Uh, we were we just went to his office, uh, just just for a round, taking a round, just a visit. Mm, and there were so many wires and so many connections. So I said, yes, you are right. You can't get time every day to come to the class. So, but is it possible that you can make a call every day? Oh, you attend so many telephone calls every day, but at least you can make one call to the center and listen one point of knowledge. I do make so many calls every day. I also listen to so many calls every day. And so I will definitely, I will definitely call every day and listen to one point of knowledge. He said, after one year to me, told me the news that during the whole year, I have been doing like this. And I also have told many others who are very busy that at least make a call and uh, listen to one point of knowledge. The main thing is there should be a deep desire, the deep aspiration. If there is not deep desire, then you will find many excuses. Once the Supreme Father asked us this question through Brahma Baba that what is that art which everyone knows today, even children and grown ups and youth and old people? And this is, then he answered, this is the art of making excuses. Everybody knows this. I asked a child of seven, eight years old. Do you know how to make excuses? Uh -huh. He said, I know it very well. You, I asked, tell me what, some, give me some examples. Then he said, he said, it is so easy. Whenever I don't want to go to school, I say to my mama, mama, Today I have so much of headache. There is no thermometer for measuring headache. And so mother is not able to understand it. So mother takes me in the lap and, and you know, massages my head. And so, oh, oh, you are having a headache. Let me massage this, let me do this. And so, so I am my excuse work and I don't go to school and so see I know how to make excuses if you note uh, the words which are used in making excuses uh, they are also very peculiar uh, the, there are words when you want to do it definitely then when you have the aim to do it when you are determined to do it then you speak uh, you will say I have to definitely do this work and when you make excuses when there is a language of weakness you say you say sister i liked it so much i yes i understand i should do it i will try i will try definitely try to do it hmm? i will try i will try i will see i will think about it so it's the language of um, uh, excuses is I will do it okay I will try I will see I will I will I will and the one who has determination he will say I I definitely have to do it so never say I will try I will try but have a determined thought that I must do it and where there is determination there is definitely success 
So God has given us the key to success. If you want to attain success in any task, whether it is a worldly task or a spiritual task, where there is determination, there is definitely success. Now it is 68 years when this institution was established. You can imagine how many obstacles, how many problems, how many situations must have come in our way for making our efforts slow down, for bringing our spirit down. But I have observed that when we are determined, even impossible becomes possible. It is not my personal experience only, it is the experience of all the members of this Brahma Kumaris World Spiritual University. If there is determination, there is definitely success. So when you make your timetable for your physical activities, you prioritize them. So this is the highest priority, then less, then still less and so on. And for the first one to which you give the highest priority, you are, you are determined to do that. So you definitely do that. And the task which is at the fourth, fifth number, you may postpone it because you are not so determined for that. So this is why God says to us, Keep this key of determined thought safe with you. Never say, I will think, I will try. Say, I must do it. I have to do it. Then uh, even the impossible will become possible. I know so many stories. I can tell you so many stories how impossible became possible. I can tell you one story, a very practical story. I am uh, based, based in Delhi. In 1973, we had to organize one big spiritual fair. Like a small exhibition, but we had to organize a very, very big fair, spiritual fair. So we uh, hired a land for organizing this fair. So it was all India spiritual fair and uh, every state had made one pavilion for this fair. And so there were about 15, 16 stalls or pavilions in this fair. So we got this land and uh, the gov it was a government's land and the government allowed us to erect this fair on that ground. And so people from different states of India gathered there and the, the work uh, everything had, everybody had planned very well and the, the, it was being structured and erected. And so the day for inauguration of this fair was also fixed. But one day before this inauguration day, we got an order from the government that you cannot organize this spiritual fair here in this ground because during those days, uh, the India used to import uh, wheat from Russia. So the president of Russia, Mr. Brezhnev, had to come to uh, India in Delhi and he had he welcome program, a reception program of this president was to be organized there. And so uh, we said uh, that, but we took the permission. We took the permission. Why can't we do it? So in that letter, so the, the thing was that in that letter of permission, uh, it was written, 
if some VIP comes, you, you will have to leave this ground for that program. So, mm -hmm. so the bulldozer, bulldozer, we will invite bulldozer and they will all destroy your fair and we will have the ground plane and have the reception of the program. And uh, so what we, we began to think that we have done so many things, so many people have gathered in Delhi. How is it that everything will be finished? So we have done it. We have done a lot of efforts. We didn't collect any donation for that. We used our own body, mind and wealth for this purpose. Um, how should uh, it not happen? So I was the one and I was going to the officers and uh, visiting them, talking to them. And everybody was saying to me, Sister, please think that Russia is giving us food. He is providing us with food. So how can we not organize the reception of that one? How can we allow you to organize this fair? Even the ones who were very close to us, they said, we are absolutely, you know, helpless. We can't do anything. We can't help you. And so what we did, all of the students of the university sat for the whole night in meditation. And we said to God, Oh, my Supreme Father, my Baba, you are the protector. It is you who know everything. We all sat in meditation. We returned back at 12 o'clock. All were already sitting in meditation. So we said, uh, already all asked us that what happened, what is the news? I told that this is the news. So I went to Baba in trance. Then Shiv Baba told a very entertaining answer. Baba said, you are practicing yoga, you are sitting in meditation. But your arrow has reached <laughs> reached the head to the only to, to to the right side, but not to the soul. It has not reached. Huh? It has not in the center of the forehead. So you have to practice more yoga. So we kept sitting for the whole night in yoga. And what was the miracle which happened in the morning? This report that Brahma Kumaris have already erected a fair and the Russian president is coming and so the Brahma Kumaris fair should be destroyed. So this news reached Mrs. Indira Gandhi. She was the prime minister. So we, we had very good contact with her that um, because of the reception program of the president of Russia, the Brahma Kumari's fair would have to be destroyed from there. When Brahma Kumaris don't want it to be done. And so what Indira Gandhi did, so she sent two CID officers uh, to the spiritual fair without our information. What did they see? They saw two main things there. As so all, uh, you know, when these two CID officers came there, what did they see? That there are so many people of Brahma Kumaris working day and night. And they working day and night here, and they also know that these are spiritual people. These are spiritual people, you know, they won't do anything. Um, so there are so many, if they will 
they will pick up black flags uh, in front of this president of uh, Russia, it would be a defamation. And secondly, in India, people worship goddesses a lot. So, so, and there was one stall which was from the eastern zone of uh, India. It was from Calcutta. And so it was a beautiful stall and there was a goddess, image of goddess there. And they began to think, if we will destroy this image of the goddess, it would be like a curse for us. We should not do like this. It, it is considered to be very bad in India if you destroy the image of the goddess. So they noted these two things and they told it to Indira Gandhi. So these are the two things. Now decide yourself what is to be done. So God, the wisest of the wise, touched the intellect of Indira Gandhi and Indira Gandhi ordered that the Brezhnev, President Brezhnev would be received in other ground, the Red Fort grounds, and not in that ground where there is spiritual fear of Brahma Kumaris organized. We were still practicing yoga. We didn't know that all this has happened. And so when we go, saw the newspapers, we saw the newspapers on the first page, on the main page, in all the newspapers, there was the news that, that Brahma Kumari's fair will be organized in that ground and the Russian president will be given the reception in another ground, the Red Fort ground. So you look, even impossible becomes possible when there is determination. So if we got even the free publicity, there was so much rush, there was so much crowd of people who came to this spiritual fair. Even impossible can become possible if there is determination. This is why we, I give you this advice. If you want your heart to be always happy, if you want your heart to always be in comfort, in a state of joy and happiness and peace, then have this practice constantly. Take powers from God, meditate, and throughout the day, check yourself, and your heart will definitely come in comfort. This is guaranteed. Shiv Baba has given us this experience, that is, God has given us this experience, and I would like that you would also get this experience. So I once again want to tell you, it is not only my experience, but it is the experience of all the students in India and all other countries, wherever we have the students of this university. So all of you have come from such far and wide. After such a long time, you have come here to meet us. You are our own brothers and sisters. We want to share with you our experience that what we have gained, you should also be able to gain the same thing. Why do we say to you again and again, do it, do it, do it? Because uh, God has told us that only at the confluence age you can create your fortune. As much long and deep you want to make your fortune brighter, you can do that now. There is no other time. This time which we are passing through, we call it confluence age. And very little time is left of this confluence age. Anything can happen anytime. 
any change can occur at any time. This is why we say you again and again, understand the importance of the time, understand the importance of the soul, understand the importance of God. It is the time when the bestower of fortune is distributing the fortune. Once Shri Baba asked a question, God asked a question. So, he, he told us that I have given you a pencil to create your fortune and it is the pencil of elevated actions which will create your fortune. So this course, these lessons which you have listened, these are the methods to perform the elevated actions. Receiving knowledge means receiving light and might. So you have received this pencil of elevated actions. The more, the longer you want to draw the line of fortune, the longer you can do. It depends upon you. It is your choice. It is the time, it is the blessing of the bestower of fortune. Therefore, I always feel when I have received this blessing, why should our sisters and brothers remain, you know, missing in this? Why should we, they not get it? Otherwise, you will complain that you attained. Why didn't you tell us? So this is why we again and again tell you, meditate, meditate, meditate. It's not that we are going to benefit out of that. We will be happy seeing you attaining something. They don't waste this time of creating the fortune as much as possible. Create this connection, maintain this relationship, keep your heart happy and give happiness to everyone. Whenever, for example, you lose happiness, what is the reason for losing the happiness? I, you have this experience of losing happiness, isn't it? When instead of happiness you feel sorrow, what is the reason? The reason is some circumstances, some situation created by people or nature. So when there is some reason, it takes away our happiness. The reason came from outside. The situation came from outside. The situation created by others came from outside. But it took away my happiness. If a thief enters your home and want to take away something from there, would you give easily? He take away one chair. Would you give it easily? Or you want to protect it? So happiness is my treasure. And situation comes from outside. Why should I lose my happiness? I should stop it. How to stop it? We need power, power to tolerate, power to accommodate. But when we don't have these powers, then the situations create an impact on my mind and I lose my happiness. But the uh, even wonderful thing is that the situations go ultimately. Situations ultimately go, but unhappiness still continues. Like there was tsunami, so it came and it went away. 
the situation comes and goes but this unhappiness remains even if i remember that situation after one month or that person comes in front of me after one month again i lose happiness manushatma bhi samne aayega na to bhi aapke man mein jo wo khushi gum ho gayi baat baith gayi na wohi kahenge ha ye wohi hai na you will again and again say this is the person he he did this he did that are the oh ho but the situation has finished long long ago why do you want to prolong it and as a result of it you lose a happiness isiliye therefore baba kehte hain god says never lose your happiness you should forget that situation from your mind to kaha bat hai ki teer kaman se nikal gaya wo phir wapas nahi aata it is said the arrow which has been shooted out of bow will not come back so in the same way the situation which has occurred will not come back but now think what i have to do in future instead of thinking of the solution in future we keep on thinking about that what happened why did this happen what happened how it happened why did it happen why this person did like this and so we constantly think like this it is all wasteful and so we become sorrowful isiliye baat gayi and so therefore wo wapas nahi aayegi let the situation go aage main kya karu and you forget about it think about what you will do in future se jo beet gayi usko sochne se kya hai bhavishya bhi nahi soch sakta when you are keeping on thinking about that what has happened then you are not able to think of the future at all because your mind is engaged in this situation then you are not able to find any solution for the future so make a note of it that you will never lose your happiness shiv baba says be happy and distribute happiness aap dekho koi bhi achhi baat aap karte ho aur log usse khush ho jate hain when you do something good and others are happy with that you become more happy isn't it to ye khushi aisi cheez hai jo jitni baantenge utni badhengi the more you distribute happiness the more it increases in you if physical things are given they decrease but if you distribute the happiness of the mind it increases even more so remember the slogan given by god be happy and distribute happiness okay you will remember it don't lose happiness what to do for that aur bhi ek baat baba ne humko kahi hai hum kehte hain aapko wo bhi suna de i want to tell you that also acha aur kuch nahi ho sakta na purusharth aap se baba says if you don't if you can't do much effort do that one thing bhi bhi koi bhi mile usse dua lo aur dua do so whomsoever you meet give good wishes and take good wishes neither give sorrow nor take sorrow give good wishes get good wishes aap kahenge hum dukh to kabhi dete nahi you will say i don't give sorrow but do you take sorrow somebody give you sorrow do you take it yes you 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 feel bad your mind you get salt the one who was giving gave you sorrow yes he should not give you but it is you who take isn't it the one who is giving is not taking the one who is giving is giving and the one who is taking is you he is giving you but why did you take it lene wale to aap ho na main aapko if i want to give you a, a rotten apple for example uh, i give you it with love will you take that rotten apple 
Would you take that spoiled thing? You would not take it. Either you will throw it or you will not accept it. You will not keep it with you. So why do you take sorrow? Uh, to um, keep it in your mind, keeping it, these situations in your mind means taking sorrow. At least remove your own sorrow. If you won't accept sorrow, then you would stop giving sorrow. So do not take sorrow. Don't feel it in your heart. Past is past. Remember, past is past. Always think how to keep myself happy. Make a plan for that. No questions, why, what, how, and so on, because it brings only loss. If you feel, if you mind, if you sulk, it is like suffering with flu, fluenza. You have this experience of flu that it, you, uh, the, your mouth becomes bitter. You don't like to sleep, you don't like to eat, you don't like to sit. The whole body aches in the same way when you have this flu of feeling, that is when you feel bad, that the same thing happens. So do not make yourself sick. Don't feel, don't take sorrow. If you don't take sorrow, you will stop giving sorrow. So neither take sorrow nor give sorrow. Give happiness and get happiness. Right? Okay? Don't mind, don't sulk. So those who promise that they will never, never feel bad and not take sorrow, raise your hand. Oh, you rush, you are from Russians. Neither take sorrow nor give sorrow. And one more thing. One more thing, it is very easy. Three things. Whenever Whenever you meet anyone, meet with a smile. You know how to smile? Those who do not know how to smile, raise your hand. Raise your hand who do not know how to smile. Now smile at least. Smile, smile. Yes, show how you smile. <laughs> so meet everyone with a smile. Even if a person with angry nature comes in front of you, your mother-in-law, your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife, but you meet with a smile. Because anger is a fire. If you will meet with a smile, then this smile will work like a water and it will extinguish the fire. And if you also become angry, it would be like intensifying the fire. So meet with a smile. I always know how to smile. I don't have to buy a smiling. I have this all the time. I can't say I don't have time for this. I don't have servants. I know, so I know how to smile. Okay, second thing. So when somebody comes to you, at least you offer him cold water or hot coffee or tea. So you all the time have one ever ready sherbet that is sweet water. And this sharbat is sweet words. You know how to speak sweet words? You have this ever ready sharbat? 
have already drank. You don't have to uh, buy it from the market. Uh, how to prepare it? How to bring it? No, give everyone this drink of sweet words. And thirdly, always be with a happy heart and make everyone heart happy. Feed everyone with the sweet of happy heartedness. So meet with a smile, uh, give them a drink of sweet words and give them a sweet of being happy hearted. Is it all right? It is easy? Easy? Those who think it is possible, raise your hand. Yes. This is possible, possible. Definitely do it, okay? Don't forget it. Even if you forget all the lectures, but don't forget these three points. This will create peace in your own home. Charity begins at home. At least your members of the family will be happy. Your home will become like a holy place. And when your home changes, then your community, your neighborhood changes, society, and then the city and the country changes. And this way the world will transform. So it is easy, okay? So definitely adopt this method of bringing your heart in comfort. Om Shanti. So you are all happy? Good. You are happy here? Take this happiness with you. Don't leave it here. It, it, this happiness is not does not weigh anything and it's not extra weight. Uh, and so you can have as much happiness in your mind as much you can. And so take it with you so that it continues with you for many, many births. Okay. Now let us sit in meditation. Abhi teen minute ke liye aap koi bhi bichar aave na aur paltu now for three minutes do not allow any other thought to come in your mind if any thought tries to enter your mind say to that thought no uh, please one year later one hour, one hour later I am very busy now I have an appointment with the Supreme Father. I am a soul going to meet my father. So, oh, this thought, go away. Come to me after one hour. Now sit for this practice. <laughs> 